And we are taking off in the brand new A2A PA24 Comanche. Well, I happened to be on Facebook when A2A announced the release of the Comanche, so I purchased it immediately, probably within five minutes of the announcement. And I was not disappointed. At the same time I installed the Comanche, I also installed updates to, to Crazy Creative's Marble Canyon, which fixed the main issues that I had with the scenery in my last flight sim video. So today we will kill two birds with one stone. First, regarding Marble Canyon, my last video, I discovered that while it supports FTX Global Textures, it wasn't compatible with FTX Vector or add-on meshes. They have since released two files, both available in the Support FAQ section of their website, which when added to the Scenery folder do seem to have dealt with those issues. That said, I look at the airport as much more of a finished product now. I chose an early morning flight to highlight the terrain mesh, and I no longer see any obvious issues, although not quite as detailed as a similarly sized Orbix airport. This simply has the effect of producing excellent frame rates. Especially considering its relatively low price, I have nothing but a hearty recommendation for it now. Now on to the Comanche. Bottom line up front, I think I have a new favorite plane. It gives me the heft of the 182, with my preferred, primarily for aesthetic reasons, low wing configuration. I am using the aircraft as is, with the exception of activating the custom landing lights. And I'm using the first livery that was on the list. And I'm glad I chose that one, because it has a very cool retro looking blue green colored panel. I like retro. The beefy nose wheel is the closest we've come to Tundra tires in A2A land since the J3 Cub, too. One thing that gave me a pleasant surprise is the frame rates. I got significantly better frame rates here at Marble Canyon than I did in the C182, and that flight was during the day, this one was at dawn. The 182's daytime flight, I locked frames in the 40s. Here I had set it at 50 frames per second, and it actually stayed there while panning around in the VC before takeoff. I ended up setting it to 56 FPS, just to make sure that while flying it would stay there. And it did. FSU IPC's average frame rate ended up being 55.3 while locked at 56. And that is while running FTX Global, Vector, Pilot's 2010 mesh, 
plus Opus FSI weather and cameras. Another thing I really like about it is its superior visibility compared to the Cherokee, especially to the sides. The high dihedral and wind location of the Cherokee make it less than awesome when looking to the side and down, although I still prefer that view from the Cherokee to what you get in the Cessnas. I've never really been happy with the Cessna's side windows and visibility. In addition to pilot side visibility, rear passenger seat visibility is great as well. One note about textures on the aircraft when you look at this video. I keep my sim at 1024, so I'm sure that the HD textures inside and out are even more detailed than what you see here. The 1024 setting not only helps with memory, but when a video is going through the video editor and then through the YouTube grinder, many tiny details are lost anyway. Not that memory is an issue here at Marble Canyon. Per FSU IPC, minimum available memory was 1745 megabytes. But the point is, is that if you run a higher texture resolution, you'll probably see even better textures than what you see here. I did have one minor issue that will need further investigation as to whether it's the scenery or the aircraft or something else. But when I first loaded up the command sheet here at Marble Canyon, I hadn't had FSU IPC configured for it. And when I touched the pitch lever on my throttle quadrant, the engine revved to the max and suddenly the sim got really choppy for a second. I also experienced this choppiness on short final, which can be seen in this video. Just based on looks, handling, and performance, this is clearly my new favorite A2A plane. Well, I hope you enjoyed our ride in the new Comanche at Marble Canyon, Arizona, and if you liked what you saw, please hit like, and by all means subscribe. Till next time.